Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art opened on 11, 11, 11. Not quite a year ago, but just about. On that day, I know a lot of you were excited, our community was excited, our staff was elated. And we still are, almost a year later. A lot of people that I know said to me, you must be so relieved, you're done. <laughs> they, they weren't wrong, there was a great sense of relief to finally welcome everybody into the galleries, but the part that I don't agree with is that we were done. It was just the beginning. It was the beginning of everything for so many of us, even those of us who had spent years getting to 11, 11, 11. What you see here is uh, part of our property, part of our museum property. This is the picture that you all saw around opening. And on the other side of the pond, there was no water on opening day. Some of you remember this, right? We were still working on some construction, half the pond was not full, and everybody came in and said, awesome, you're open. Oh, you're, you're not done. You know, I don't think we'll ever be done. We will always be becoming, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. How we do our becoming, and how you are probably doing it too without even realizing it. I want to talk about the design process. And we're going to talk about it in theory, but before we do that, we're going to put it into action. And that's why I have these tables. And that's why some of you have been pre-selected volunteers to come and help me. Take a look on the floor. If you have a pink card under your chair, oh, I hear the groaning already, yes. Pink cards, come on down. I need eight people, yeah. <laughs> I'd like four of you at each table. We need to make two teams. Look at that, only six came. I love it. Rebels among you. Okay, so the three of you stand around this table, please. And if the three of you would stand all the way around this, you do not have to be looking out because you have a very important task at hand. You're gonna create something today in a very short amount of time with very limited directions. Ever been asked to do that before? Uh, you're going to have a design challenge. Your directive is to build a tower. That's it. Build a tower. You're going to do that with the materials on your table, pipe cleaners and tape. Highly technical process, clearly. And your goal is to advance the slide. Your goal is to build it as tall as you can without touching it for stability. You need to be able to take your hands off it and let's see if it stands up. Make sense? Build a tower with those materials, pipe cleaners and tape, and you want to make it as tall as you can without it falling over. You're allowed to talk, you're allowed to plan, you're allowed to do whatever you need to do to get this done. You could even recruit some help, but you can only do this for three minutes. Do you have any questions before I start the clock? How are we doing that as a team? A team. The three of you will make one. The three of you will make another. And at the end, we'll have two towers. Very tall, stable, beautiful, perfect in every way. Are you ready? <laughs> Go. Three minutes. For those of you watching, if you have advice or help, shout it out. Don't be shy. Hurry. Hurry is great <laughs> advice. Awesome. Awesome and perfect, truly. Have you all ever felt like this at work? Make it perfect in three minutes with, with no uh, help or prep. That's why I want you to help if you can. We're about one minute in, gentlemen. Two minutes to go, no pressure. Two minutes to go. You have about 20 seconds before your hands need to be off the table. 20 seconds. Keep it on the table, very good. Excellent advice. Wow, like 10 seconds to spare over here. Oh, cherry on top, look at this, ambitious. And three, two, one, and step away, please. Oh, come on, let's hear it. Come on up here, guys, come 
on up here. Don't run away. Don't run away. Stay here for just a moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I need your help. Let's look at these. Which is taller? Is it, is it a slam dunk or are they pretty close? Maybe it's easier to start with which is most stable. Over here, okay. This one, until that last ambitious addition, <laughs> was so taking it, man. That was, that was great, but you weren't afraid to go further. That's right, those artists, ooh, what they do. So I have a couple of questions before you guys sit down. First of all, I wanna ask how it felt to do this in two words or less. Rushed, <laughs> two words, Exciting. rush. Exciting. Did it remind you of anything you do in your regular life? Yeah, look at them, yeah, oh, yeah. And um, did anybody have prior knowledge that they brought to this that kind of helped make it easier to do? Did anybody offer any tips right from the start? Foundation. Foundation, the foundation here, good. Structure. Structure. And um, how much time would you have liked to have had? Four minutes, see? I don't want much, I just want four. <laughs> Gentlemen, have a seat, thank you. Give them a hand, please. You know, this is so indicative of what we all do in so many ways every day. Um, this is not something I invented. This is something that educators in museums, uh, a model, if you will, use all the time. In fact, I just did this, I was on that side of the doing of this, at the National Building Museum in Washington, D.C. this summer. And the reason it, this is a thing we do is because it makes the point of what the design process is. So now that you've seen it, I want to break it down and unpack it a little bit. The design process is not linear. It doesn't happen the same way twice, even though we do it every day. We do it differently every time we do it. That's why the graphic you see is in a circle. And in the middle is the step of evaluation. You can do evaluation at any point in the process, as many times as you like. So it tends to be the center of all good design processes. We'll start today with defining the problem, because that's kind of how this began, right? What's your problem? Build a tower. Well, the problem is really essentially two things. Not only what is the issue, but what are the requirements to achieving success? You've got to know both things before you can move ahead. Understanding the circumstances that surround the problem are incredibly important to your success. The circumstances here included pipe cleaners and three minutes. But with steel and six years, maybe you could have made a museum. Once you know that and you've evaluated all of those circumstances. It's time to generate ideas. How do you solve it? What are the ideas? Do you go with the Eiffel Tower structure? Or do you just rely on tape? <laughs> There's a lot of ways to accomplish things. Brainstorming, discussing, drawing, sometimes just imagining gets you there. Evaluating all those ideas and moving on to the next piece includes planning. And that seemed to be the part that you didn't have enough time to do today. Nobody stopped and said, all right, so let's sit down and make a list. <laughs> Nobody did it. And while that's what we all intend to do, right? Sounds great. We all plan. We've all got those apps on our phone that help us organize our thoughts. Who uses them and how often? I'd love to use mine more. Sometimes a plan is a sketch or a map, just a list. Once you have that, you evaluate how you're going to do what you're going to do, you have to actually produce a solution. You have to fabricate. You have to do something. This is the design plan, and it is not reserved just for designers. In fact, at Crystal Bridges, we use this the most on non-creative issues, things you might not be expecting. And I want to share one with you today so that you can see just what I mean. If you've come to visit Crystal Bridges, you've been one of more than a half a million people who have come in less than a year. On our busiest day, we have 4,000 plus people in one day. On our slow day, we have in the neighborhood of 900. That's our slow day. So everybody's got to get there somehow. Most of them want to park their car. We have 250 parking spaces right next to the building and another 100 or so a little further away. And we built it that way because there's a total of 133 acres of beautiful Ozark forests that we do not want to turn into concrete. So we built a conservative amount of spaces. And on the first day, it became clear that we were in trouble. 
but for how long? That was our question. We know people need to park, but if we had enough spaces for those 4,000 people every day, someday would we have far less and have wasted our efforts? Parking was not solved before we opened. It was not solved after we opened. And it's still being worked on today. So let me take you through what we do to find this solution. And it'll give you a hint on how to maybe use this in what you do. Define the problem. Well, people need to park. But it's not just guests, it's our staff. And we're there every day. And our thousands of volunteers who are there almost every day as well. What was the context? Well, you know, it's opening year. And by definition, we're going to have more people opening year than any other, very likely. It doesn't mean we won't be busy, but it doesn't mean we'll be this busy forever. So our decisions have to be careful. We also had to look at our resources. The land, yes, we have many acres, but who wants to take out a 300-year-old champion tree to put in a parking lot, right? There's a song about that, isn't there? Who are the partners we can rely on in this case? These were the ideas that we started to pull out of the context of the problem. And the other ideas that came out of it were really great, including incentive programs for staff members who live nearby to walk or bike to work. If you did that enough days, you got points towards a reward, which could be from the money standpoint to a really great cappuccino down in the coffee bar. We also talked about carpooling in the community, people who are coming together and encourage them to come as a group. We looked at our neighbors, like the First Presbyterian Church of Bentonville and Orchards Park parking lot across the street, and thought about if we could use those spaces and maybe shuttle people into the museum on a rainy or cold day, that might work too. All of these ideas were really good, and there were dozens of other ideas. We had to evaluate each one at each time, and then we made a plan. Well, we had to have more than one plan, if we're being honest. Uh, this weekend, we opened two new special exhibitions. You can bet that we already have our shuttle drivers scheduled. But on a Monday, maybe, a random Monday, when school is in session and people are at work, we might not need them. So planning had to happen for different circumstances with different solutions. And of course, contingencies on what happens when all of that fails, like maybe the solar-powered shuttles haven't seen sun in a couple days. Then what? All that stuff happened. We, we acted as if it had already happened and produced contingencies and plan after plan. And at the end, the solution that we came up with was to pretty much do all of it. And we still do all of it today. And the one solution that we tried to avoid, we decided we couldn't avoid anymore. We added and just finished, about a week ago, 100 more parking spaces. Because clearly, here we are almost a year later, and we still have hundreds and hundreds of people, if not thousands, every day. Probably going to be there for a while, and it's a great problem to have. So we added some more spaces. The design process is something that can happen in your life, too. So I want to leave you with a thought. How could you rename this? so that it fits what you do? Is it the decision process? Is it the family vacation planning process? Is it the, as it is in my home, how to help your son find the college of his dreams process? Call it whatever you like. But if this process can help you towards what you're becoming, use it and use it again. Thanks. <laughs>